Sisto, what a knock inside towards Junior. Junior in a really good area. What a goal that would have been. Chukweze rebound and it's 1-0 inside 12 minutes. Just the start we were hoping for here. As he's away from his man. Sisto needs to give him the run. He's waiting for it still, Patrick. A pee on Sisto now does that. Here we go then. For number two, quick as that with a counter attack. And Peon Sisto's got it. Atletico's night goes from bad to worse. Patrick Corner, where's he going to put this? It's into the area. Zachariah's off. And a parting gift before he leaves the club, maybe. 3-0 Villarreal. Great turn from Sisto. Leaves the ball to Patrick, who finds Chukweze. Back heels for Luka Jovic. Great block, but Jovic is still going to get there. And he somehow turned it in off the inside of the post. The Knights got even worse for Atletico again, as it's now number four for us here. That's the difference, really, and that's the fourth throw. And that should do it then. Chuck Weze to clear out wide towards Sisto. 4-0 victors, three points again. Sociedad, what have you got for us? If you want to keep tabs, you're going to have to keep winning. Hello everybody and welcome back to more career mode today episode 7 of season 4 coming your way and as you saw in the previously section we smashed Atletico Madrid last episode by 4 goals to nil but there is opportunity today for them to take some revenge as we have a double leg header against them in the Copa de España which you're going to be seeing in this episode. There's also something massive for you guys to decide upon as well. So if you want to do that, stick around to the end of the video and you can find out what it is. Or alternatively, if you want to spoil it for yourself, you can click the top right now and have a vote. But please do wait for the moment because there's something huge that we have to take into consideration in regards to that decision that you've got to make. So let's kickstart today's episode off then. The first things you're going to be seeing is three new contract signings that we're going to be giving for next season pre-contract players. I took a look through the comment section. The most liked comment was to do the pre-contracts but sign nobody over the rating of 85. I broke that for one of these players. So I first up signed uh, Rashika, I think it is, for the right winger. I signed Arnie Mayer as well as a central midfielder. And I thought to myself, in terms of centre-backs, I really need one of them. And I feel like not getting in Skirinjar would be a bad idea. So I decided to do that. So hopefully you guys don't get too mad at me for that. Hopefully uh, you are accepting of that. I still stuck with it for the first two in uh, Rashika and Maya. Obviously both 83 rated. But I just decided to push the boat out and get Skirinjar as well. So we pass up on Mbappe. We pass up on Dybala. We pass up on Neymar. These big names who were available on pre-contract signings that we will not be signing in this transfer window. If we want to make those uh, signings happen, we're going to have to pay money next year for them. So we pass up on the big guys. Really, only the one we take in is Skirinjo. He's 91 overall. Let me know if I'm saying his name right, by the way, because I could be saying it wrong. So into the action we go then. And like I said, double leg header against Atletico coming your way for you to enjoy. We started off with the home leg first in this quarterfinal of the Copa de España. And we actually didn't feel too bad coming into this. I named a bit of a weaker side, a few uh, younger faces out there. Whereas Atletico, they left no punches to be spared. They threw out their strongest 11. Started off the game really strongly, but then lost concentration with the last kick of pretty much the first half. And the one thing I will say, I was livid with Ruben Blanco there from the corner. If you watch that back, his goalkeeper positioning for Angel Correa's header is less than to be desired. Let's put it that way. So... Few minute Ruben Blanco as we went into half time, finding ourselves a goal to nil down, comparing it, of course, to that 4 0 win that we got in the last episode against them. But then, second half underway, Daniel de Groot pops up in the 55th minute to equalise the score at one apiece. Now, I was feeling pretty alright about this. A 1 1 draw is not the end result in the world, you know what I mean? It's, it's not terrible, but it's not fantastic. But then, with 12 minutes to go, Dennis Zakaria, Zakaria, who could well be leaving the club in this episode right here, if that deal to Chelsea goes through after this game, in fact, gives away a penalty kick. It was a bit of a dive by Hernandez. I'm not going to lie. I was fuming when this was given. Um, but having said that, if the tables were turned and it was given to us, I probably wouldn't be complaining, you know. So, yeah, I can see why it's given, but I was livid nonetheless. And I was thinking, just miss this. Ruben Blanco guesses the correct way anyway. But Griezmann puts his spot kick wide. And that was all we had in store for the first leg of this one. It was poised to be quite the spectacle over at their place when we take them on. But a 1-1 draw from our ground. And it could have been a 2-1 victory if Griezmann converts his penalty kick. But all I'll say is, I looked at that back there. 
And I felt like 1-1 was a fair result. You know, it wasn't a bad game at all for either side, really. So 1-1's not a terrible result. But it still means no revenge for Atletico, of course, after that 4-0 smashing we gave them in that last episode. And the news came through that Zakaria has now, in fact, left the club. £60 million deal to Chelsea, which meant our, our plans were put into place to bring in the replacement, which, as I said in the last episode as well, Leandro Paredes was that man that we highlighted we wanted to bring in should Zakaria leave the club. That's what happened. We went over and put the plans into place. £32 million minimum fee release clause was activated. We sat down with him, had his talks, and the contract we eventually agreed on was £70,000 a week for the Argentinian midfielder. So I was very, very happy to get him into the club. And there are his stats. If you want to check them out in more detail, pause the video and you can take a look through them as I'm scrolling down. But what a signing I think this could be, by the way. It's a like-for-like -like replacement in many ways. But I actually think in terms of what we've got, for half the price, I am very happy with that business. Thumbs up from me, in all honesty. And he's going to make his debut here as we take on Valoded in the, uh, I think, the first of two La Liga games that you're going to be seeing today. And let's face it, should be quite the comfortable victory here. Patrick, though, inside 13 minutes. Had an opportunity, really well saved by the goalkeeper. But from that point forward, it was pretty much domination from us, as you can expect. Having been unbeaten so far in like 20-something games, I was just waiting for the first goal to go in. And I thought to myself, as soon as that does, floodgates will open. And how about this, by the way, from Pion Sisto to open up the scoring just before the 20th minute mark. Cuts inside on the right foot and absolutely rifles it into the near post. No chance whatsoever for the goalkeeper. There you go. Have some of that, says Pion Sisto. And like I said, it then got worse for Valo did. A lovely ball over the top. Look at this from Chikwese. Flicks the ball back over the top of his head and sends in the cross first time to actually find the back of the net through Luka Jovic's header. It's worth one more look at this because the audaciousness of the skill from Chukweze. What a player he is turning out to be in this season. I brought in De Groot as somewhat of like a replacement. My plan was to start Sisto and De Groot in all these games, but Chukweze is certainly stepping up and as one of the original cast members really of this team that we, we inherited when we took over at Villarreal, I can't really be happier with him. But then he showcased it again, not too long later, hitting the post here in search of his very own goal. It would have been 3-0 and a guy is seriously putting up a name for himself as to why he should be the lead man alongside Sisto on the other side of that. But then Luka Jovic gets his second of the match after firing one low and hard into the bottom right corner. Again, no real chance for the goalkeeper, but this is unsurprising. We should be winning these games comfortably. We are top of the table at this point. And uh, having been unbeaten, the, the quality of players that we've got, we should be able to dispatch of opponents like this fairly simply. Theo Fanos came off the bench and got his first goal for the club as well, not too long later, as he converted a really nice finish back to goal as well. And that's a good sign because it shows that he knows where the goal is without even having to look at it. And you have to commend the work here, by the way, from Chippewa. A 10 minutes to go in the game, 4-0 in front, and he is running down defenders to win back possession. Lays it on the plate for Luka Jovic. And the next thing you know, it's 5-0 Villarreal and it's the hat-trick for Jovic. But like I said, you have to commend the work rate of Chuk Wawese because in the game, you're 4-0 up. You don't need another goal. You're 10 minutes to go. He could have sat back and let them have that ball. But he says no, wins one tackle, wins a second tackle, continues with the ball and feeds it to Jovic. The guy, for me, I know Jovic got a hat-trick, but Chuk Wawese put up a man of the match performance there. That's all I'm going to say. And I really am happy with his kind of attributes and sort of what he's bringing to the team right now. I can't really be happy with him on that right-hand side. And he's still only 22, 23 as well. So a lot of years ahead of him too. But in fact, he is one of the things that we will have to discuss at a later stage involved in that move in the transfer window. So that's your vote, which is why I wanted you to wait and see what was going to happen. So please, if you haven't voted, stick around and see what I mean. Um, I don't want to lose Chuck Weze, but he is part of a deal that is, is, you know, for another player that we could bring in who would be just unbelievable as well. So you'll see what I'm talking about at a later stage. But for the third and final post-com game then of today, it's going to be Atletico in the second leg over at their ground. I thought to myself, as long as we start off really quickly here, take the game to them, we should be fine. And inside the half-hour mark, Patrick megged Janok Black and we had the lead as a really, really nice finish. But you want to talk about players who step up? I'm going to talk about an underrated player here as Leandro Paredes smashes in his first goal for the club here. Fantastic finish into the top right corner. But to talk about underrated players, I don't think you have to look any further right now than Noah Beister. The kid joined us at such a young age at the Klafschap. We brought him over to Villarreal. He has big shoes to fill. 
kind of went under the radar a little bit at a craft shop. He was fantastic, but he's come in and he's just so solid defensively as well as going forward. You want to talk about the pass of a match? Look at this from Noah Beister. Switches the play over to Pion Sisto. Sisto puts the cross in. I'm thinking, Toko Akambi, please finish it now. What a goal this would be. Unfortunately, the header was narrowly wide, but the pass of the game has to go to Noah Beister. That switch of play was insane. And like I said, as an underrated player goes, him has, or he has been, for me, that guy. He's just so, so good. And I'm sure in years to come, you'll be seeing him in these important fixtures just making the difference. He gets an assist as well here. Sends the cross in and Samata put his header in the bottom corner. For me, Noah Beister, young player of the season, definitely. Young player of the series, definitely. And the kid has just been unbelievable. I know Patrick is up there as well as one of the best players. But you can't, you can't discredit the guy at right back, Noah Beister, what a signing he has been and what a player he is sure to be. Anyway, talking about the game, 4 0 up here, dismantling Atletico for a second time. Two back to back, four, well, not back to back, but two 4 0 wins against them in two episodes. I think we're a bit of a bogey side for them. They just don't seem to be able to deal with us right now. I mean, here, Hernandez, that's poor defending. He tries to stop Toko Akambi getting on the ball and uh, kind of pulls him back a little bit. And then Toko Kambi just drives to the byline, keeps the ball in play, sends it in, Samata heads it in, and it's uh, it's the fourth goal of the game. So, a 4 0 de demolition job again, and as if it wasn't hard enough already, the draw was made for the Copa de España, and as you can see, we've been drawing against Barcelona. So, if we want to get to the final, we're going to have to do it in one of the hardest run ins that we possibly could have been given. Atletico Madrid in the quarters, and now Barca in the semis. Bit frustrating, but if you want to be the rest, or be the best, you've got to beat the rest, as it's known. So, yeah, without further ado, that's going to do us for the post-com section of this episode. Let's jump to live for one more game against Bilbao and then that all-important decision to be made. Got two days left in the January transfer window right now and uh, I still haven't got enough money to make one major signing happen. I've got a little bit, about 30-odd million, but I came across this right here. Liverpool boss keen to bolster goal-scoring options with a picture of Messi on it. So obviously that would affect us because if he leaves Barcelona... Um, then it could well be that uh, we will have a nice time of things. And as you guys know, we have actually drawn Barcelona in the Copa del Espanyol, the Copa del Rey. So I, I don't know what's going on. If he goes to Le Liverpool, Messi, I will be pleasantly surprised by that. Um, it would be a, a good addition, but he is 34 now. So I, 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 can't, I can't see it happening. Having said that, though, the biggest deal of the window so far remains our sale of Zachariah to, uh, to Chelsea. So, yeah, um... Without further ado, though, we're ready to jump into Athletic Bilbao. As you can see, Sossi had have dropped off slightly, but they're still remaining close in uh, in this one. Five points behind us. Still undefeated after 20 league games is how we find ourselves. And uh, it's about who can keep this going, who can keep the consistency. We're fighting on three fronts right now. The league, Europa League, and, of course, the Cup as well. But with Barcelona to come in that, I'm not sure how it's going to go. So I've named a really strong side here. And then we'll go with a few youngsters against Barca. But there it is. And Paredes has been brilliant since joining, by the way. So I'm hoping in this next game he can do bits. I'm saying that. He's only played two games. But yeah, he's been good in those two games anyway. And some of you may know this. Some of you may not. We actually were looking at bringing in Jack Butland as the season began. Choosing instead to go for, of course, uh, Ruben Blanco. So it's going to be interesting because he starts against us today. Renato Sanchez in the midfield. And a front three that involves Unas Cordoba. And N Nasiri. I'm not really sure who those three are. Nevertheless, we can't see, uh, we can't disrespect our opponents. We've got to give them the utmost respect and uh, play our best to beat them today. Did we make the right choice in bringing in Ruben Blanco instead of Butland? We will find that out because if he frustrates us here and stops the scoring, then it would be a bit of annoyance. But to be fair, if he would come in, he would only be a backup to a senior right now. And as you can see on the bench, we don't actually even have a goalkeeper because that's the way I do it. High risk without playing once. If we ever sustain an injury or have our keeper sent off. I have to put an outfield player in goal. Um, but that's just the way I choose to do it. And uh, so far, it's not failed me. So let's start, not start now. As uh, the boys are ready, let's get this game underway then and see if we can pick up another three points that hopefully will take us even further ahead at the top. I'm hoping for Luka Jovic as well to have a good performance. He got a hat trick earlier on against Valodid. And uh, again, he's the main man to pop up with the goals. Here is Patrick. Ball to Paredes. Can really strike them, Paredes. And he's looking for it. It's bouncing through for Pion Sisto. <laughs> and the composure was not there this time with Sisto. He's, he's, he's normally so good in these positions. <laughs> oh, I should have even tried it. I should have just brought the ball in control and looked potentially to play it back in. But I saw it there. You know, Sisto's naming lights, if you will. 
Tried it and he skies it. I mean, it's, it's a poor shot in the end, but it really was going to be when he's off balance like that. Thing is, we've seen Paredes uh, score in the last game, was it? So we know he can hit them. And they're stepping up and allowing him to take that shot on. It's a bit worrying for uh, for Bilbao as Paredes is going to win that back again. Up against Renato Sanchez. Finds Pion Sisto. Ball inside to Jovic. Jovic to Chukueze then. What can he do as he drives at them? Patrick, Sisto, good play. Sisto delivers the cross in towards the box. Paredes underneath it. Bounces through. Deflected. And it just won't go in. Jordan Shoy was corner ball. Again, though, we are dangerous in these positions. Need to be a good delivery from Patrick. Is it good enough? Patrick's delivery. We're up well. And uh, Diop wins the first one. Doesn't win the second. Junior up from fullback. Walks into a little bit of space. Finds Jordan. Jordan can hit them as well. And Jack Botland makes the save. And we are half an hour in here. And it's one-way traffic at the moment. Bilbao really need to try and make something happen. Assisto, a bit of trickery. Delivers across towards Pags. How's he missed from there then? I thought for sure I was about to celebrate Pag's goal. That is a poor header by all accounts. That's all you can say about it because he's got so much time, so much space. I'm pretty sure it was green as well, the time. And Pag's has headed over from yards away, really. I can't believe he's missed that. Vincente's ball in and that is another good header this time though. Good save, Asenio. That's what you've got to do, Pags. I mean, that was harder than yours, and he's got it on target. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I have absolutely... Oh, no, 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 no. That's not a good battle you want to see. Chuck away, eh? Not the best header of a ball on the pitch right now, and he's marking in the box. So, yeah, we conceded a goal earlier on against Atletico for that. Um, but, yeah, you know, you look at Pags. He's got to score there. Chuck away, eh? Ball to Lukiovic. Stays on his feet, Chuck away, eh? Really nicely done. And he drives then now at Bilbao's back line. Turns on the inside of his left foot. Chuck away, eh? To finish. What a block by Muniesa. I tell you what, defensively right now, Bilbao are loving it. Some great tackles going in there. Patrick's delivery to Junior. Unable to win that header, but it's brought down by Chuck Weze as we get possession back. Defensively, Bilbao have been throwing their bodies on the line here. Patrick towards Jovic. We actually meant that for Beister, but anyway, Luka Jovic has got the ball and done well with it. As he finds Paredes on the run. Paredes in the box to finish. <clears throat> Less said about that, the better, I think. I mean, it's not even a block. It's just straight out of play. And again, I don't really know why we can't find our finishing boots today. I'm going to make a change here. De Groot's going to come on and Zidis is also going to come on for Patrick. I mean, we need to find something. Jordan, Chukweze. It's not great at the minute for us. We're struggling to find an opportunity to actually even hit a shot now. Paredes and Jordan link up. Zidis is in the middle. Have we found him? We have done. What can the Greek young man do as he looks to turn and find the corner? And in the end, it's gone wide. Is it a deflection? It is a deflection. What? Mate, you saw the deflection. Okay. Are you telling me the ball's more through him then? Is that, is that what we're doing now? Is that, is, that, is that what's happening? Is it? Here you go. Let's have a quick look at this. Let's watch it go through the player. There you go. Goes through him. Oh, what a joke. Should have been a corner ball. It's not. And you can, clear, you can see I'm kind of getting frustrated. And that's why I'm trying to... Clutch at straws to get anything here because that's really what I need because we've not been good enough really to win the game. But I mean, if that's what's going to happen, you know, what's the point at the end of the day? What is the point? You know, you can you can push for, for 90 minutes to try and find a goal and if you get robbed out of decisions like that, it's not on. Pazidis, the group might be in, the group is in. Furpo is the... What is going on? How is Furpo up there? I mean, I'm not complaining because it really did nearly get us a chance. But the, the fact of the matter is, why is he... What? How did you miss that ball? What is going on? Oh, <laughs> this is unbelievable. How did we not even get a chance there with Furpo? He ran all that way and then ran out of legs at the last second. It's, it's so unlucky. And there is the full-time whistle. Abysmal game here, really. There was only one team looking to win it, and that was us the rest of the time. Bilbao sat behind the ball, trying to catch on the counter. That didn't work. And all I can say is... I'm so frustrated in my team that we didn't find the winner. But it's difficult when you come up against teams that are just going to do that against you. I mean, yeah, what can you say? Luckily, we've got Barcelona next. And I don't expect Barcelona to sit back against us. Because if they do, you really are taking the mickey. Because, you know, they should be able to beat us on paper. They're just as good as us. I can understand why Bilbao came with that game plan. But it is frustrating nonetheless. And a boring nil-nil draw then. I think as well, the worrisome sign there is that you look at the players we had out and they were starting 11 players. They were good players and we seem to not be at the races and be able to create chances. So 
Slightly worrying that. But for us, though, we move forward then into Barcelona, which is going to be the first leg of this cup tie. I have absolutely no idea how it's going to play out. But we've got the deadline day anyway. So what I'm going to do is, with about 36 million quid left, I'm going to have a little look and see if anybody takes my eye. Then I might make a new signing happen. We'll see in a few seconds for you, of course. It might be a bit of time for me. Who we decide to bring in. I'm just going to take a look around the world and see what is available. So I'll be back in a second. I've had a look through and uh, I've decided I want to bring in a new number 10. Okay. Now, I've come across quite a few names. The first of which is James Rodriguez, of course, playing for Real Madrid. He's got a year left on his contract. And uh, as you can see, we can approach to buy him here. Now, his game time has been very limited at Madrid because of Isco still being there. He's only played four La Liga games or something like that. It might be five. I don't know. Maybe a bit more. But um, obviously, Isco being there does limit his game time. So right now, he's actually had an offer from Manchester United to come in and play. So... Uh, we could go for Hammers. Uh, Amiri is another player playing already in La Liga again. And uh, he has, actually has a release clause of 28 million quid. He's worth 37. Same with Donny van der Beek, except he is actually in uh, in the Bundesliga with Bayer Leverkusen. Another release clause though as well. And Mason Mount is in there. I've decided against Kang in Lee because with Lazidis coming through, I've just thought to myself, there's no point bringing in another youngster. Because at some point, Lazidis will probably step up and become the Cam in our team. Therefore... Even though Kangi Lee will be a great signing at £15 million, I don't think we need him. So, I think the top of my list right now is to go for James Rodriguez and try and nick a deal. Problem is, it will definitely have to be a player plus cash deal. Because um, we don't have £48 million to spend. So, my ambition here is to try and make this happen by offering them a load of cash and a player as well. The question is, who do we offer as part of the deal that Real Madrid are actually going to want? So, player swap. Um, what strikers have we got? We've got quite a few, but I don't think they're going to want one. Wingers. We could offer maybe a winger to sweeten the deal in terms of midfielders. Paredes, Jordan are all going to stay. We could offer Trigueros. We could offer Baselli as part of the deal. Fullbacks wise we haven't got a lot anyway. Centre-backs, same thing. So I really am kind of stuck as to who to offer here. So I'm going to start off by offering Baselli as part of the deal. And uh, we are looking to bring a fullback striker or winger. Okay. Let me have a think about this. Oh my goodness me. I am at a crossroads here, guys. Because, as you can see, I went through and I looked at which players they wanted. They didn't want either of my two strikers in Samata or Toko or Kambi. Um, and in the end, I came to my wingers. Obviously, we've got uh, a few wingers that we could have offered. Chukweze being one of them. Um, uh, Daniel De Groot being another. Uh, Sisto as well. So I threw up Chukweze and we actually do have enough money to make it happen if we... Go for Chukweze plus 35 million. The problem is Chukweze has been so good for us that I actually kind of don't want to let him go. Such a hard decision as well because he's one of the originals from Villarreal and he's been really, really good. Oh, this is so hard, man. I don't know what to do. I've counted for 30 million pounds for Chukweze and they really want the 35.8. So I'm going to accept this deal. But I think I'm going to let you guys decide it. So, James Rodriguez, we've negotiated terms. All we now need to do is give him a contract. And he would be so good for the season and a half, maybe, that he'd be here. It is a lot of money for an ageing player. But, like I said, with Lazidis coming through, there's every chance that he would then take over as our number 10. But for now, I do want a new number 10 to sit in behind Jovic. So, James Rodriguez, we've negotiated that. But having said that, I'm now, I don't know. I really, really don't know at this point. I'm going to also go in and activate the release clause on Van der Beek and Amiri as well. So we have these two guys to think about too. And then I think I'm going to let you guys decide it. All right, so I'm activating the negotiation, uh, the, um, the release clause on Amiri. And we are activating the release clause on Donny Van der Beek as well. So, here is your options then, my friends, for you to decide upon before next episode. And, of course, with it being deadline day, this is where we will end today off. I am honestly, I don't mind whichever of these three we bring in. I just want that new number 10. So, James Rodriguez is obviously the best of the three. He's going to cost us the most money. It means Chuck Weze will go over to Real Madrid. And I, I will really feel kind of a little bit bad about that because he's been really good for us this season. And he is one of the original cast members that were started here when we took over as Villarreal boss. 
And uh, as much as I don't want to lose him, it would be great getting Hammers in. But I'm actually open to the idea as well of keeping Chukwueze and going for one of the other two. So that's your first option. You've got Amiri as well, which is another one that we could go for. Um, we've, we've negotiated 28.3 million release clause for Amiri. Um, he's already playing in La Liga as well. Wouldn't cost too much on the wages. The only thing I don't really like about Amiri is the finishing. Um, he's quite low at 70 for a cam, but the rest of it's decent. Ball control really good, dribbling really good as well. And uh, four-star skill was three-star weak foot. And then the final of the three, Donny van der Beek, of course. Unbelievable for Ajax in this run in real life in the Champions League. Another one who doesn't really look fantastic in terms of the overall cam aspect, but great finishing, decent ball control, good long shots as well. Long pass, short pass, volleys in there too. And he's actually got a four-star weak foot as well. I think out of the three, obviously the best player is James Rodriguez. My personal favourite, I think, is just... To go with it right now will probably be da uh, Donny van der Beek of Beek. Do let me know how to say it in the comment section if we do sign him. But I'm going to let you guys decide it. Top right hand side of this video, you've got one of three who will come in and be our new number 10. Van der Beek, Amiri or Rodriguez. Over to you. So due to that then, we're going to end today's episode off here. I will try and get this next episode out as soon as possible for you to enjoy. Of course, we'll begin that with Barcelona in the semi-finals of the Copa de España. But in the Liga then, this is how it looks for the table right now. Sociedad and Madrid still to play. We sit top of the table on 51 points. 21 games played so far. Not too long to go. 17 games left in La Liga as we search for our first title as Villarreal boss. But that's not what this episode is about. It's a massive decision to make. It might mean Chuk Weze going in the other direction to Real Madrid. He's been phenomenal so far this year. In fact, before we go, let me show you his current stats so that you guys can have that to sway your decision as well. And of course, do make sure if you're casting your vote, you've thought about it because I don't think you can change once you've pressed it. So these are currently Chuk Weze's overall stats for the season. A 7.7 .7 match rating, 8.1 in the Europa League, a 7.8 in La Liga, three goals, six assists in 14 La Liga games, nine assists, five goals in 26 appearances in all competitions this season. He will go the other way if you guys choose for James. Of course, he stays if you go for one of the other two as well. It's a massive, massive decision, which you will make it. Until next time, massive thank you for watching. Like it would be greatly appreciated. If you aren't around here, like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below. A fantastic Sunday evening, and I will see you all again tomorrow with another video. I might give you guys a day or two to decide on that, but if, uh, if I feel that most of the votes have come in and it's a landslide, I will try and get the next episode out ne tomorrow maybe. If not, definitely the day after that for you to enjoy. So... Yeah, stick around for that. Until next time, adios.